Good morning, everybody. Um, my name is Alka Reebok. I'm a partner at Dentons. Uh, delighted to be here this morning. Um, I also run the Chicago chapter of the American Council in Germany and am the um, Council of Trust for the Swiss Consulate uh, in the Midwest. Um, let me start off by thanking um, Select Chicago for hosting us today and for putting together the online conference. It's a new format for all of us, um, so bear with us. Uh, we're hoping that we can give you the same, um, if not more, content uh, than we have in the past. Uh, I am delighted to introduce uh, Ginta Rubin, who's going to help us understand the benefits of having boots on the ground today, or high heels in this particular instance. Um, Ginta is the founder of INI Today International Consulting Firm, which specializes in the manufacturing, e-mobility, and new technologies industries. She earned her Bachelor's of Science in Business Administration from Columbia College, focusing on international business strategies. Ginta is also the president of CITGA, the, the Chicago International Trade Commissioners Association. She takes pride in leading businesses to set obtainable results and to achieve their goals. She has a sharp eye for untapped possibilities in um, upcoming trends and provides straight feedback when needed. I can testify to that. Um, Ms. Rubin is a proud mother of two talented boys um, who remind her of the importance of investing in our future leaders every day. As she was born in Lithuania and was an international exchange student in the United, United States in 1998. She is fluent in both Lithuanian and English and has a conversational understanding of Russian, Polish, and German. Um, let's kick it off, Ginta, then. You are a local advocate for foreign companies coming to the United States. Um, what does that mean? Um, thank you for a lovely introduction. Uh, indeed. So what I see um, having a guide, a tour guide, if you go to foreign country, um, the same way I see having a, a great opportunity to have a business guide when you're trying to go to foreign countries. What I notice internationally is a little bit maybe frightening if you ought to go somewhere not knowing the language, not knowing the culture, not knowing some dynamics or nuances. Um, it definitely found that it is tremendously helpful to have boots on the ground to help you, and I guess heels in the ground in my case. <laughs> and yes, I have run in my heels before. <laughs> Superwoman, nothing new, right? Um, you and I are both are mothers, so you know how it goes. You prepare for everything. Uh, but as an international representative, it helps to guide the companies to understand their needs. And I do encourage any incoming large or small businesses to obtain a consultant or some firm who is locally uh, very affiliated with the economy, uh, local businesses, have a quick connection to make a transaction much smoother. So um, I found the company in 2016, I and I today, um, by mere notion that I identified a lot of things when I was encountering with the businesses coming the need of understanding and bridging that knowledge for them. Um, I know today, some of you are not familiar, it's an acronym of the uh, funny sentence, and it stands, I need it today. Uh, what I noticed that in today's society, especially with the young kids, everything is today, from Amazon Prime to I want my gift today, I want, I want, I want it today. So that's how the name came of INI today, and um, it's stuck with me, and um, I, I thought it was an interesting uh, abbreviation of something that you could obtain and get it today if you need it. So tell us a little bit more about the areas you see companies coming here, foreign companies coming uh, to the Chicagoland area mostly struggle with. So Midwest is located, uh, as you know, in almost the center of the United States. Um, and due to in-commerce foreigners years ago, majority from Europe, European countries, it does resemble culturally somewhat of Europe. 
But if we see the, uh, the businesses coming from Asia, from Africa, India, um, even Mexico or Canada, they do have a curve to go over the culturally. Um, the way we do business, uh, similar, as I mentioned, to European in terms of speed, uh, tenacity, uh, but for some cultures where it, it takes time to develop a relationship to Eastern uh, countries, um, that change might be a little bit longer because here in the United States, you know, we never close 24 seven. There they take time to get to know you, to um, understand where you're coming from, to get to know your families. And that sometimes for the United States, uh, more reserved businesses, um, it's taken back why do you need to understand my family? This is business and business only. So um, my strive is to help businesses to truly get the footing here by guiding them day to day what they need to happen and getting their needs met. Okay. I see this on the I see this on the legal side every now and then in, because there's cultural differences there too. Uh, the U.S. company or U.S. business partners will send out a first draft that is incredibly favorable to them. And my European client is hugely offended um, because they thought they had had very friendly conversations before. Um, and it is just a very, it's just a different way of doing business, even, even if, especially the Chicagoland area, was, um, has a, a heavy, heavy a European uh, influence and history. Indeed, I did notice legal world is where it needs um, a lot of guidance, for mm -hmm. sure. Um, where Europeans, you know, tend to um, be more conservative of what it is. The United States uh, does have um, a bit of arrogance, you know, um, mm -hmm. this is for me. Um, so on and off, we do help them to mute and open their eyes saying it is okay to think a different way and come in the middle. Um, the, the most surprising um, sometimes when legal language was put in there saying uh, which country you laws applying. Are you applying to European, which is very different? Are you applying here in the United States? Now you're talking different courts, different laws. Yes, there's international laws that here, but it, that usually uh, where it takes some time to negotiate which part of the country you are adhering to the laws. Um, and uh, sometimes uh, do business get stuck on it. <laughs> uh, so let's get back to the economic side of things. The OECD just stated that FDI foreign direct investment is expected to fall about 30% in 2020. Um, what do you see at the moment? Um, do you see it generally cool down? Do you see businesses come back? Do you, and if businesses are coming back, what do you see come back? Can you differentiate by industry? 30% um, I would say conservative. Um, I, I, I do not like bad news. I like to see things in the positive light. And uh, looking at the reports and looking uh, of what predictions are, because they are just predictions. Um, yes, we have the first wave of slowdown and that will have impact, my own prediction, 18 to 24 months to come. And uh, the way I see it, the smart businesses will look for opportunities. The not so smart will panic. And panic does nothing but increase fear um, and fall apart attitude. Smart businesses, what I noticed what they do is first internal house cleaning. What can I do internally to adjust from technology to maybe educational certificates? Uh, what is there left over that we always put aside for tomorrow? Number two, um, where can we find uh, growth and opportunities in the sector or maybe acquiring a different sector for us to grow? Um, Kodak is one of the incredible companies. They went from making just cameras to expanding into medical and to films. That type of attitude, what I would like to see businesses here, in Middles, even foreign businesses to look for opportunities. The, uh, 
unease of foreign direct investment that is not really coming here, a little bit related to, um, of course, political. We waiting for elections. So that kind of put a little bit on hold what happens from there, you know, either hi uh, Highway A or Highway B. Where are we going? Um, the banks holding on on lending, including venture capital. So I met yesterday with the angel investor and the attitude is finish what we already started. Uh, we regrouping for next fund and we waiting to see what businesses will try to do with the new elected officials. Um, that holding pattern it might be scary for some, opportunities for the others. I always say look for opportunities. When the crowd scatters and runs, there's always something to do to help them to calm down and be a leader. Um, the big thing that I do notice um, is coming from foreign direct investment is for lookout uh, for land and places for manufacturing. Um, that uh, notion started when it was mentioned um, onshoring, the bringing it back. Um, and especially after pandemic showcased uh, a lot of weaknesses here in the United States and abroad in different countries. Um, what do you do when you're vital suppliers, vital materials are not reachable for you. And I think that shortcoming gave us an opportunity to revamp our ideas and the plans. What do I do? How do you prepare for something similar um, in the future? Um, I'm not a visionary, but <clears throat> I'm pretty certain it's not if this happens again. It's when. If you look at the patterns, we always having from Ebola to any kind of tragedies happening uh, worldwide, what do you do to make yourself sustain what you have and maybe grow and help others to grow as well? You raised two points there. Um, one is um, it's the, the, the fact that it is um, a good time to redo your um, business strategy. It's probably the best time to redo your business strategy because any change will now be forgiven. Um, and I see a number of my clients do this. It comes along with um, a good time for being for investments. One of my clients looked at an investment which in the United States, which was then halted and is now completing that acquisition at a significantly lower price and cherry picking exactly the assets that they that they want to of see. Um, and it is while nerve wracking uh, to be doing this and it takes a very solid and thought out strategy. Now is the time to do that. Absolutely. Um, generally, I would say I see the foreign companies fare a little bit better there than the American clients at the moment, simply because they're better capitalized. Uh, and they have the strength of the foreign foreign mothership behind them. As you said, banks are still uh, timid uh, and are waiting up things to happen. So that seems that seems to work quite well. Um, so what what is lagging? Where do you see the biggest the biggest challenge at the moment? Is it the insecurity with the elections? Is it the f remaining fallout of the economic consequences of COVID? Both. Um, as much as I don't want to admit it, political influences are pretty big on the businesses. Um, the new treaties or lack of sometimes uh, prohibits you even move forward. And if you re-strategize and with the new agreement, you don't make any money what's the purpose to continue? The uh, COVID, um, it shall pass, mm -hmm. uh, but I think it will teach us a lot of uh, lessons how to prepare better and how to address. Um, I do noticing a lot of movement in the C-suites in the larger companies. They are rethinking of the uh, who's truly a leader uh, and who is just a manager, dictator. And in the uh, situations like these, you need leaders, someone that gives you hope and guides you through it. 
instead of we always done this way, <laughs> why change? Uh, no, you have to change. You definitely have to change. And uh, from um, the Caterpillar to Tristan Krupp, I, I noticing the large foreign companies and local companies adjusting not only their employees, but their C-suite. Because they're noticing they need new ideas. They need to be open to do their operations how-to. They need to adjust uh, of how they work together. Um, many of us were not able to be in the same room. And many of us, uh, at least my age, I'm used to be in the same room. I used to walk up to somebody and talk face to face. Uh, the technology with this invisible wall uh, and sometimes a comfort zone not to do that. And if you don't create a dialogue, there's no movement, there's no progress. So I definitely would see the companies who have able to have strong leaders. It worked well. This spring, I adopted a beehive. It was a tremendous lesson for me of how small society works. Um, from Mother Queen to the leader, to the drones, what they call drones, males, to the bee workers, to the nursery, to the uh, soldiers who protect the hive, how they work together, how they address the diseases, how they bring the honey and they make uh, food for everybody, and how they work together and how they address the crazy wasps attacking them. It reminds me of miniature example of what we're dealing today. If you have a strong queen mother bee, she will guide the whole family through it. If you don't, it will whittle away. Uh, let me pick up on the uh, community aspect you just, you just raised. Um, it, that seems to be uh, challenging in the Chicago land area um, as a whole at the moment. We've had a good amount of unrest in Chicago, in Kenosha, in a whole host of areas which um, our foreign clients have for the long time considered reliable and very stable um, areas to do business. Um, what do you think um, the impact of the unrest will be for the Chicagoland area as an investment hub? And what do you think can be done um, to, to, to manage the situation? It is very pity what is happening in Chicago. Um, and this is nothing new actually for Chicago. It's, it's a land uh, and the greater area who always survived. Uh, from the Chicago Great Fires, to mob days in the 70s, to uh, today's riots. Uh, what I see is the um, uh, many years of I ignoring certain communities. I just want to point it out that when you hear in the news, it's a zoomed in one square kilometer of the neighborhood that is unrest, and it's currently spilling out into something that it's meaningful for the rest of the Chicago, such as Michigan Avenue, State Street. Um, I drove there through State Street yesterday, and in every line there is, was a policeman car. Um, they bringing in, which reminds me from inauguration DC, uh, a dump trucks and snow plows to, to control some, uh, some of the traffic. It, it's, People feel they haven't been unheard. The isolation brought the fear of instability, a fear of losing the way they lived what they had, and the fear drives a certain flee or fight. In this instance, they chose to fight. And uh, you know, who you blame, if you don't have blame, you blame the man. So you go after somebody who is not providing you or withholding you something that you believe is yours. Um, I, I, I do like the uh, Mayor Lightfoot strategy of investing in the self side because you do, don't punish because they're writing. Uh, you help them to grow and then give them tools and show them how to use those tools. Instead of throwing the money, go away, be quiet. She is investing. She is uh, 
bringing the foreign direct investment, building the uh, apartments, building the hotels, building some manufacturing down there, help them to, to show that they could sustain themselves and grow and be equal as a loop downtown of Chicago as well. So I applaud her for it. Can it be done more? Always. All of us could do better than we are today. So there's no reason to bash someone didn't do this uh, or that. Chicago is just a miniature of example how the whole country, even the rest of the world, fails. The fear drives certain behaviors. Um, I wish people will not loot. <clears throat> That's not the way to do the message. Do what does impact. Go vote. Speak up. Do the things that will have an impact. Protesting, yes, it's one way. Looting, that you just crossed the line. That is not okay to hurt somebody to make your voice heard. We'll have you sign up to volunteer for the elections in November. <laughs> <laughs> um, so there's two other trends which, uh, did we just lose the camera? Um, there's two other trends uh, which I would like, uh, I'd like to talk about briefly. Um, one is reshoring back to the US. There's a number of foreign companies that had left mm -hmm. the US for mm -hmm. manufacturing, um, which might be looking to undo that choice. Um, let's start there. Um, are you seeing any of that? Um, and what are your uh, recommendations for companies undertaking a move back to the United States? So I, I, I spoke to my friend John from Minneapolis, who is the head of um, government relations for 3M. And definitely there's movement to bring more manufacturing here in the United States, especially with PPE, something that was needed. And it was recognized that a lot of it, it was done foreign and not necessarily coming back uh, to the United States. Or it was coming back, it was perceived as hoarding here mm -hmm. versus sharing with the rest of the world. I did, uh, for that, pull the article the other day from <clears throat> September 9th by Forbes. Why reshoring U.S. manufacturing could be the wave of the future by Nick Stonington. Um, and he talks about it that bringing back here um, manufacturing would be good for next generation. Because no, we're not bringing your old world hands-on manufacturing very much so. But we're bringing the manufacturing that is automated, that does apply artificial intelligence in there, and give people skills to do something great with uh, the way they did it, either be a coal manufacturing, which no longer exists the way it was done, or manufacturing in a very high tech. Um, I believe one of the great examples was the Haribo, the, the German manufacturing opening in Wisconsin. So uh, everybody, we're excited. It's going to be 10,000 jobs. And you know, I kind of raised the eyebrow. I said, knowing the way Germans work, um, there might be about maybe 500 jobs. Uh, there will be 10,000 jobs logistically, for sure. But manufacturing, it's going to be probably one of the most high-tech, and it is the largest in the world, the most high-tech manufacturing for gummy bears in the world. So that type of manufacturing um, improved by technology is what I see is coming. And I, I do want to point it out, and I know um, we talked last year at Harvard University, the loss that uh, imply of different kind of artificial intelligence manufacturing is very different than what we have today loss uh, with the human labor. It's not bad. It's a good thing. I know change is scary, and it might come at slow, it might come at big cost, but the rewards for it, it would be great. We are a large enough here in the United States to sustain it if we have to, but we don't have to. We could share and rebuild the uh, new way of doing business by bringing more manufacturing here and sharing with the rest of the world. So I do see foreign direct companies coming bringing here because we have ability to do so. Okay, uh, thank you. Um, 
The next thing that if I were sitting abroad, um, I would take a really close look at before I invest in the US is environmental challenges. Um, we've seen uh, a dam break. Uh, we've seen the wildfires. Um, have you seen have you seen companies consider this? Absolutely. Um, it is pity if someone doesn't. Um, that would be uh, foolish and ignorant not to see the differences. And of course, there are different opinions of uh, global warming environment. It, it, it's not that matter. I think it does. Even if you don't believe in science, and if you do believe um in the change even if you follow religious guide you do, do see the larger fires the bigger storms the bigger unease extremes in the temperatures that alone i think should be for somebody to say um or raise the question why mm. and the question why will give you the answer there something is needs to be done and if there's a massive change in the last 30 40 years what happened that would have that massive change. And one of us is industrial uh, growth. And what do we do? So I applaud for the companies who do environmental uh, consciousness. The Mercedes, zero emissions by 20, I believe 35, uh, um, it was promised to us. I think it's great. If we could do sooner, even better. Um, ecologically packaging things. Uh, it frustrates personally to no end when you perceive something and there's packaged something inside the something inside the something. <laughs> it's like, why? Uh, I, I get it looks nice, but it, at the end of the day, uh, you know, me throwing little something, ten thousands of me throwing little something, that just doesn't disappear. We are piling of it. Being cautious of what you do and how you do, it should be everyone's agenda, not only big companies. That should be starting at home. And that will grow at schools, that will grow in communities, that will go in the states, countries, and that will reflect in everybody else's behavior. Um, so when a company is considering coming here, at what point in that in their internal conversations, should they read out, reach out to a, to a consultant to help understand one example you and I had talked about, Chicago and Chicago land. Chicago is not only Chicago, it is, it's, it's a huge, um, as Michael was describing earlier, it's a huge area of reach um, to work through, to work through all of those options and those choices. I do encourage as soon as possible. But I also understand sometimes companies do incognito reach out and looking themselves, like bringing executives and going through the streets, going through local businesses, looking how the feel uh, of the community is, how are the schools, how do we take pride in our own communities. Um, consultant definitely will cut the time shorter by listening off the needs and customizing the plan of what they want to go. Do a very strategic introductions that you may, may not obtain if you just come in yourself. Um, with Zoom, sometimes it feels it's easier to reach somebody uh, through instead of knocking on the door and going through two secretaries or uh, administrative assistants, but still, personalized, pre-screened introduction is worth gold. And that's what I encourage businesses to seek out for local boots on the ground, <laughs> high heels on the ground, <laughs> be that, um, and help them to understand as we talk about the cultural differences, legal differences, what do I need to do to bring this manufacturing? Is this a good fit? Um, Chicagoland is bigger than just Chicago immediate area, as Michael mentioned. There are municipalities and uh, communities open arms with the available land, available resources, uh, available sometimes in funding off the bat to make it a very easy transition. And uh, the companies who do reach out and do their homework 
are uh, much more successful than the ones who don't. And I'm, I'm not bashing uh, any of the country, but prime example of not doing homework was Foxconn. Uh, such a pity, pity story that in my prediction, and I hope I'm wrong, I really do, um, it's uh, going to be another failure, another big uh, flop um, in something promised to communities uh, thousands of jobs, uh, pouring the uh, federal money into the highway and you know, leveling down farms and uprising somebody's uh, living, um, you end up putting one building three years later. Not okay. That is, I consider, irresponsible. Um, I would even hesitate to call this as a form of booty. <laughs> and it, because you did harm by promising something you do, or you uh, unknowingly did harm to the community because you won't be able to deliver. Well, thank you for your very, very insightful remarks. And I think we will hand it back over to Michael to open uh, the networking, or do we have questions? Yes. So uh, a question we get often is when businesses are coming over, they think it's all going to magically happen in 35 to 45 days. So in your experience, what's the general time frame for and a sequence of services as companies come in? What does that look like for them? Magic is only in the fairy tale book. <laughs> um, I have seen magic in real life. 35, 40 days, that is magical. Um, unless you're coming fully funded and uh, you come in in the right place at the right time, uh, chances are very slim. Uh, you do need to do your homework. You do need to talk to local municipality, be that the economic development, mayor, a consultant, uh, get to know your local accountant, legal side, uh, banking, um, because it's more to it uh, than that. It, it is a ball of rubber bands. Um, you know, you have to take layers away to understand what's inside of it. Um, so 30, 45 days, pretty tenacious. I would say the, the standard process for making decision here in the United States for foreign companies, anywhere from 12 to 18, 24 months before a breaking ground. I've seen better. I've seen in the Michigan City, Indiana, it was pretty fast. I think it was 12 months. Right. That they, they, had a, they, they already had a presence in the United States as well. Correct. And so if some a company is coming over and landing their first uh, you know, market discovery person. You know, kind of walk us through market discovery, sales office, permanent office, uh, then expansion. So what are, as you see, Foxconn is a is an atypical example since they were doing their breaking ground at our conference in 2018. Like during our conference during 2018, they were breaking ground. But what have you seen as a as a typical time timeline for companies entering the US market? Well, as I mentioned, two years it's as a discovery process, that would be a very much so typical. Um, and that's not because anybody is not doing their work. It's just because so many components are included, so many meetings, so many decisions need to be made. Um, and physically, that's what it would take. But to take off the company and be productive, I would say three, four years, uh, is that the cycle that is very much so normal. So when you're making the budgets, making five year is would be a minimum. And to that point, I think it makes it makes a whole lot of good sense to invest that time. Um, it allows you not only to analyze and truly analyze market differences, because um, the uh, first of all, market differences. If you come with your market understanding from your home country, you might just fall flat on the nose here because the consumer acts differently. Um, it also allows you um, to take lessons learned on the differences in the market in figuring out where you need to be and how you need to position yourself. Um, again, to allude it to conversations with various government entities. Maximize the support that you can get. Um, where can you get the support and where, where, does that, where does that make the most sense? We had another question from one of our municipalities. And 
in your experience, what's the percentage of when a company is coming this way that they're hiring local versus trying to bring in you know, a large section of their uh, entire team? Um, in my experience, it depends a little bit on size. Um, so the, I have not seen I have not seen someone not sending a person they know and they had who had some experience, oh, right? True. But they're not bringing uh, like other countries when they go to a project overseas, they may bring a hundred people with them. Right. I don't. Uh, I that that does that does happen. It does happen, but most of the time, and increasingly so with bigger investments, especially to get the local expertise, uh, local distribution channels, for example, are very different here. Uh, than they would be in Europe, so it makes sense to hire a local talent. And local talent high up, um, having an impact on the entire organization. Um, plus, so, plus the cost. Right. Uh, here in the United States, the, uh, to obtain HB1, HB5 visas, it's extremely expensive. Um, and relocation of someone here, it has to be very strategically. So I wouldn't see bringing 100 people uh, for a labor that it, it, it will not sustain uh, the company and would be cost effective. So besides, if you're trying to uh, and going in, in any market to be accepted uh, and run well, you do want to hire a local help and be, you know, make them to be your cheerleaders for a local uh, markets. So definitely C-suites and some, some of the management I, I could see especially in the beginning, bringing in to, to get the culture, to get everybody acclimated, and maybe leaving um, strategic people in. But no, I, I don't see everybody, you know, like, a, let's pick up the family and move. Right. <laughs> and so, you know, so for a municipality, as they're looking to entertain international companies entering into their neighborhoods, what it seems like it's an additive piece for their business community, because you're bringing in new money and new talent, and then creating a beacon for better talent, better local talent to retain in their community. So, um, so sometimes we have to hammer that home of, it's not taking away jobs, it's bringing another resource to create more jobs. Sure, and it also brings a, host, a whole host of other opportunities. Um, to the extent that those, those jobs have not existed before, there are train, there's training potential. There's a potential to work with local colleges um, to address the needs of the foreign companies. Um, obviously, all of that is a tremendous amount of work, tremendous amount of work, because reformulating programs to address modern companies' needs is, um, is work intensive. Uh, however, it's also very necessary. And if the local muni municipalities can lean on foreign companies to help drive that process, um, that will benefit um, an, an entire American generation uh, in the long run. I always suggest the uh, municipalities think of themselves as the flower petals, right? You have a nucleus, but you have a flower petals coming out, so you're feeding uh, and attractive different labor from all around the other towns and municipalities as well. It's not only one town that receives that particular investment manufacturer. Um, you get the uh, labor um, and other tier one, tier two suppliers from all around. So it, it does become a spider web, you call it spider web flower, you know, however <laughs> you want to describe it, uh, depending uh, on the visual appeal. Uh, but the, the key is for success is in many ways in the life side is collaboration and, and working together. Um, there's not a single person standing who has been successful on their own. There's always a team and working together behind it, be that the uh, different chambers, different towns working together, putting their resources if one doesn't have together um, instead of like pushing someone down. No, you're not part of this. Not at all. Why not? It included. Um, they might have something. Um, you would be surprised that it, it, it's a, a key puzzle for your success or for the growth that you imagine. So collaboration for uh, 
together municipalities. I think that's what the success has been always of Chicago Land. Um, yes, I'm seeing nucleus downtown kind of making you know me gorilla thing. I am it uh, when people land, uh, and it's okay to start there if you try and say Chicago, but then spread out and, and showcase the the rest of Chicago Land. And yes, sometimes I will admit myself being selfish. Uh, I'm in, in Detroit suburbs. I'm still small in Chicago life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and I think we have time for one last question. And some of it just comes into for the companies looking to come here, how important is it to do, say, multiple familiarization tours? And, you know, last year pre COVID, we were running uh, familiar, familiarization tours monthly. But you know what? What are some of the benefits of that having these businesses coming or coming to the area and doing a familiarization? So I had an honor to be with you and a few of them. Uh, it, it's been great. Uh, it's very informative, and uh, I truly could say in every one of them I had aha moments, uh, a lot of learning uh, in there that I wouldn't get from the pamphlet or a marketing piece. There's something about a human nature meeting one-on-one -on -one and getting to know from the uh, locals of what it feels to be. So getting the tours, getting a strategically someone guiding you where you, you could feel best, pre-screened uh, tours, and uh, that is a, a crucial piece to success. Uh, because similar way if you're buying shoes you will try five to ten pairs right until you make your decision and that should be a similar way if you put in that type of investment to visit more than one municipality definitely great well i want to thank you both for a wonderful panel today and so for you know we have 10 15 minutes before our next panel so i'd encourage everybody who's online to go into the networking area and see if you can strike up some conversations, but definitely look at uh, Keita's profile and Elke's profile online, learn more about them, and look for interactions. Thank you so much, Michael. Thank you so Thank much. You so much. Thanks okay. for having us. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank